Hey friends, my name is James. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I've got a little bit of a step-by-step -step process video for you about photo stickers. Now I print my photos on stickers and I just find it the easiest way to get them into my journal quickly and efficiently, uh, especially without all the mess and fuss of fussy cutting and glue. Uh, sometimes I still fussy cut them a little bit, but I uh, typically just print them out in squares and stick them down. I wanted to step through the process because I had a few questions about it on Instagram last week and I thought it'd be a cute little video to just throw together and show you exactly my process step by step. I will just say before we start though, if you have a different printer, you have different paper, you have different um, you know, settings on your computer, different whole computer in general, all of these variables can kind of affect the quality in some way, shape or form. It's impossible to really know until you try it yourself. So I'm going to step through everything I have and lift, list out all of my supplies just in case you're in the market for a new printer or something. Um, I love my printer. I'm the one that breaks it when it breaks, but um, it is a pretty good, reliable, uh, really high quality printer that I, I just use. I use a lot. I always use my home printer for kind of everything I do, but um, I'm going to step you through that process. The things that you will need, uh, first of all, a journal, if you want to put your photos in a journal. I've got my 5e here so I can show you a few examples of my um, of my photo stickers that I just used to put in here. And you're also going to need some papers. I'm going to test this out on three different kinds of paper today. Not to show you like really quality because they're all from the same company. So they're all a, a good quality, but they're all online labels.com. Um, I wanted to show you the different results that you could get because I do switch between matte photo paper, glossy photo paper, and transparent matte photo paper. I say photo paper, they're all actually just label papers, like adhesive uh, label papers, sticker paper. Um, it, different websites call them different things, but I, for my intents and purposes, <laughs> call them photo papers because I only usually print photos on there. So um, I'm going to show you the same little setup of this photo and I'm going to kind of pepper in a bunch of other photos as well that I want to use in this video. Please don't tell my mum I'm showing you this photo, she would hate it, but it's the most recent family photo that uh, we kind of had when we were on a FaceTime call the other day. So I wanted to put that in my journal just to kind of commemorate that special memory. We, I mean, for obvious reasons, being in different countries, even in different states when we are in the same country, we never really get together and, um, and are all in one space. So it was just kind of fun to see the whole family in there. Um, I want to print that out and put that into my journal. I also uh, just wanted to show you the different results on different types of papers, just so you could see. I'll put one in my five year and we'll figure out where the rest go. I'll put in other photos to make sure it's kind of full. But for now, um, I'm going to use these little four by sixes in my printer, the Canon MX922. I'm going to load those into the feed tray. Again, all printers however you load them, put them in there like that. Um, and then I'm going to go over to the computer and show you how I lay out certain things for certain sizing. I'm actually going to measure the space that I want to fill in my journal and I'll come up with that number and then I'll show you how I size it perfectly for the journal. Okay, so here comes the really fun, boring computer part. <laughs> um, I'm in Photoshop, I'm gonna open a new file and I'm going to make sure that it is the same size as the paper that I'm going to print on. So for me, that's a four by six. So I'm just, uh, there's already a preset one here for four by six portrait. I might actually, yeah, I'll do portrait four by six. Um, the resolution you want to be at 300. That's a really good resolution for print size. It's also going to matter because we took measurements and we want to make sure that those are pretty accurate. So I'm going to press okay. Now this is what's going to print out of my computer. This is the four by six little piece of paper. So this is what we're going to throw our photos on. I took some measurements, so I want to make sure that the photos that I have, that I, if I want them a very specific size, they're actually going to print out the same size that I measured. So one of the first measurements I took was kind of the sidebar of the page, the bit next to the reindeer that I thought I might want to fill. That's 3.5 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to put those centimeters in. First of all, the resolution has to be the same. So it's 72 here for some reason. I'm going to put it at 300. That matches the original resolution of the paper. If those resolutions are off, the sizing is going to be off and the quality of the pictures is going to skew. So uh, you don't want to, you don't want to have those as different. So 300 for both will set you up for success. Now the width, I measured at 3.5 centimeters and the height I measured at 12 centimeters. So when I press OK, Technically, if I printed this out at 100% on, on my printer, on my printer, printer. <laughs> if I printed this out, this would be the space that fills that sidebar. So now I know that whatever 
photo I want to fill that sidebar with has to fit into this area. I could choose to fill the whole thing or just use it for a guideline. Now here's a little trick that I do sometimes if I've got multiple different sizing things that I need to consider or um, for example, let me click out of this. I measured the little the writing space on the left hand side page. So I'm gonna make a little bar that matches that space, the little writing space. Cause sometimes I do a whole bunch of photo collaging in there. Uh, like some little overlay clips I'll show you here. <laughs> so I want to measure that out at 9.5 centimeters wide. I actually think this is a little rough estimate, but it'll do for me. Uh, 2.5 centimeters high. So this is the little bar that I would write in to put my passage for each year in the, uh, you know, the five year Hobonichi. So if I were doing a little photo collage, like here I have a bunch of art journaling the magic little square photos that I want to print out for the day. I don't know how many are going to fit in there, but I'm going to drag them from my folder. I'm, I'm going to start with, let's just start with five, see if they all fit. I'm going to drag them in here. It's going to resize it to fit within the frame, uh, horizontally or vertically, however it feels it needs to. So this is going to kind of snap it into size and I'm gonna put all of these pictures on and shuffle them around and make my little collage in the space. So this is already making it the perfect size so that when I print it out, I can just cut it out and paste it straight over the top. And for me, I don't even have to paste it because it's uh, sticker paper. So I just have to peel the backing off and stick it down. So obviously a really simple drag and drop if I just wanted to fill the entire space. Sometimes it's not as easy to fill the space. Like you've got an awkward uh, kind of overlap. It's really up to you how much you decide to fiddle with that. I might choose to have one photo big and then the rest I'm gonna put next to each other and just make them fit. So when I cut it out, I might actually still have the date up here and maybe a little bit of space for journaling. You don't have to be too particular in this part. Remember, you're still gonna cut out some of this, so you might end up trimming off some of the edges. If it all fits, it all looks good, you can flatten the image. So I can go to layer and press flatten image. Sorry, this part cut out really weirdly, but you next wanna go to select all, then edit copy. I go back to the page that I wanna print and press paste. This is my little four by six because both are 300 uh, DPI resolution. It's going to stay the same size. So this will be the size that we measured out. You can see how big it's going to print on your actual finished page. So I'm going to put this here and that's going to be one of my little uh, photos for my journal entry. I'm just going to delete all of that so that I can use that again because sometimes I just want to put the photo in there. Sometimes I just want a photo that can fit and I can do my journaling next to it. So it's going to snap it to the right size. In this case, you don't even have to copy or flatten or anything. I usually just do that for collages. You can just drag that layer once it's resized. You can just drag it into your new uh, print file. This is my four by six photo again. So this is just to make sure that the sizing that I want is going to work. Now that's for the little bar on the left hand side page. I'm going to make that size again that we did at the start, the 3.5 by 12 centimeters. This is for that long bar next to the reindeer. And this is where I want to put my family photo. Luckily for me, as I drag and drop it, it's pretty long and narrow anyway, so it takes up a good amount of space. I'm just gonna press enter and then drag that over to my print page. There we go. It's up to you whether you put these together to save space or leave a little border. Sometimes I like a little white border around my photos. It really depends. I feel like I wanna add anything else. I mean, for my five year, I usually keep it day specific, but I've already got that size kind of measurement there. So, and I know it's pretty average for like, you know, half the page. I might just use this guide to keep resizing some of my photos. You gotta play a bit of Tetris to try and fit everything in. Better to do that once you've got all the photos on there. If measuring isn't your thing and you don't really care for specific sized photos, you can just drag and drop onto the page you're gonna print. Just remember this is a four by six, so this is technically four inches wide. So you can kind of judge it that way. If you brought it halfway, you know that's now two inches wide. You can give it rough estimates. It still kind of works. At the end of the day, if you have to kind of trim off the excess of a photo to make it fit, I always, I still think that's easy and fine. Some photos you will want a little bigger anyway. And I want to print a little bit of a bigger one so that you can see the difference in quality on some of the papers. Well, not quality, but just how they look different. Are there any photos I haven't used yet? This guy, this one, this one, and this one. I'm gonna throw all of these on and then find little places for them. 
All right, this is probably gonna annoy some of you that there are some gaps in there, but I'd probably spend a little longer doing this if it weren't for a video. In any case, we now have to print it. When I go to print, I wanna check my printer settings. And for me, the first thing I click on is the print settings. I'm gonna change my paper size to the four by six borderless. That way I can print right up to the edge. I'm gonna to go to the quality and the media. Everyone's little file dialog boxes will look different. Wherever you can go to control all the settings, you wanna make sure that you're set to whatever paper you're using. So for the matte papers, I'm gonna press the matte and for the glossy, I'm gonna press the glossy. And I'm gonna make sure that the print quality is high as well. Save all of that. My orientation of the paper seems to think it's uh, horizontal, but it's not, it's vertical, so I'll switch that. Now here's something that's really interesting, <laughs> scaled print size. It is a four by six photo, but for some reason, I don't know if it just gets scattered in the cloud as it sends it over via Wi-Fi or something, mine will print ever so slightly bigger. There's kind of calibration that's really unique to every machine really. So um, I have to bring mine down to like 99 or 99.5. I know it seems super small. If your printer does it at 100% and it's bang on perfect, that's great. But I have to kind of adjust for a little bit. I would just recommend you starting at 100. Measure it once it's print. If you need to compensate a little bit, then you know bring it down a half a percent or something. But this is totally particular to my printer and my computer, so you just do 100%. I'm gonna press print, and then we'll have a look at all three final results. And here we go. These are the final three little prints. Again, just showing you the difference between the matte photo or the matte sticker paper, the transparent matte sticker paper and the gloss. Cause I do think there is a difference that's worth noting. Is any one going to make you mad? Probably not. <laughs> I think they all work. Um, but you know, certainly people have their preferences and for different reasons. So let's start with the matte, just the regular matte. This is uh, not see-through, this is not transparent. So I would say that this gives you probably one of the most dull effects. So if you're someone that really likes to bright, uh, print really bright colors and lots of heavy, like deeply saturated blacks and, uh, you know, pinks and bright yellows and stuff, like it's, it's probably best to choose something. Even, even if you do go for the matte transparent paper, it does pick up a lot better. If you just look at the note, uh, notice the difference. Both of these are technically matte. This one you'll be able to draw on with pencils and stuff, but this one will have a harder time. This one isn't just super glossy, it's not super reflective. So that's kind of the matte that it is, but just notice the difference in the blacks from the matte photo paper. I don't know if it'll sh super pick up in this lighting, but I'm trying to go as natural lighting as I can. There's a softer kind of more matte black here, and there's a bit more of a uh, kind of more rich black on this transparent paper. The quality as well, sometimes with these uh, matte, matte papers, they can just be a little less crisp. If you want the most crisp, um, I think even this can have a bit of a slight blur look to it. If you want the most detail, you're probably gonna have to go for the gloss, and the gloss will also give you some of the richest saturation. So uh, people do generally stick with the gloss if they're not heavy into kind of layering, you know, mixed media supplies over the top because with the slick surface it's really hard to add things like pencils and crayons and stuff like that so if you're an art journaler and you put your photos into your art journaling i understand why matte would be the way to go and um you know it, it's all just personal preference at this point um i personally enjoy some of the transparent ones because i find that it's the thinnest sticker that I can get, but also for the transparent sticker paper, it can sometimes appear to have a bit more yellowing in the adhesive than the others. So just be aware of that. Some companies are different. It really just depends on the type of glue and how quickly it ages. But for the transparent, that seems to be a little bit more noticeable to me, some of that yellowing. Also, if you're using something like a Hobonichi with a grid in the background, you will see that grid through the transparent, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depends. My tip for when you're using the transparent is to burnish it into the page so that it completely melts and disappears. These can often look like they're stuck on the stickers, but this can sometimes look like it's actually a part of the page. So if you're someone that wants to transfer a lot of your personal drawings or illustrations and paintings to make it look like they were actually done in the book, the transparent is a really good option for that. But I use my bone folder to burnish it into the page. If you print this on the wrong side, you will know because it won't dry. <laughs> so make sure it's printed on the right side. Almost every time I go to print, I always lift up a corner to see which side has the adhesive for my printer that goes face down. And uh, I haven't had many problems in a while, so it's always a good thing to check. So this is how I make my sticker photos for my journaling. 
I usually have a ton on hand and some from throughout my life and some from really recently and uh, they kind of run the gamut from super sentimental and emotional to completely outrageous and ridiculous <laughs> and just for fun I will print anything. I love having a home printer and I love having a big stack of these adhesive papers. Just makes the whole thing a lot easier. My cutting machine that I use to trim all of these up is a Tonic Studios uh, paper trimmer and this is just a small one. I believe a newer even smaller one came out this year so I'm going to stick with the one that I've got because it still works perfectly fine but if you plan on doing a lot of this it is a lot easier to cut it up with that paper trimmer than to get your scissors and cut it out but if you like fussy cutting that's totally up to you as well. I hope you enjoyed this video if you get to printing some of your own photo stickers for your journaling let me know until then have a great day. Bye. Thank you.